I'm Becky Hayward, the Income and Sustainment Manager, and I'll be hosting our second Facebook Live panel discussion, focusing upon financial wellbeing through the cost of living crisis. I've been joined by colleagues from our income and tenancy sustainment teams who will be here to answer your questions. So how this works, we'll be taking questions throughout. If you're watching live via Facebook, you can submit your questions via the comments section. These questions will come through to me and I'll ask someone from the panel to respond. If you have questions that are specific to your situation, we may need to speak with you individually after. So if you'd like to meet the team, Stacey. Hi, I'm Stacey, I'm the Tenancy Sustainment Team Leader. And Kate. Hello, I'm Kate, I am a Tenancy Sustainment Advisor. Damien. Hi, yeah, I'm Damien and I'm an Income Manager on the Income Team that deals with your rent. And Rob. Hi, I'm Rob Panning, I'm the Head of Development and Assets. Thank you. So a brief overview of our services. We have two teams who can help you with payments and managing your income. The first is the income team who can support tenants with paying their rent on time and identifying and supporting customers who need assistance. Income account managers often speak with customers about payment plans and staying up to date with their rent. The tenancy sustainment team work closely with the income team and provide support and advice on making the most of income, ensuring you're accessing the correct welfare benefits and support available. Recently, we've all seen the financial impact of the cost of living crisis, and we've had a lot of inquiries about how to manage. We're welcoming your questions today, and we'll try and answer as many as we can. Please note that there often isn't one answer for everyone when it comes to income and support available, but we will be happy to speak to you on an individual basis after the session. Rob is here to discuss property-based questions, as we're also focusing on plans for energy rejection programme as we're assessing properties and developing plans to improve them where possible. Stacey? We all know that there's a huge amount of information being generated on financial matters and the cost of living at the moment, and hopefully we're here today to provide a little bit of support on how we can be of assistance to you and trying to gain information and advice regarding things like grants and increases and impacts of the recent and upcoming changes. So on with the questions, we've posted this session on our website, so we have been fortunate enough to have some questions provided to us already. So I'm going to allocate questions like to the panel and in a bid to get the right answer for the right person. So we've had a question in saying, are there any support schemes for helping to pay my bills? I'm going to give that one to Kate. Thanks, Becky. Um, yes, in short, so the energy rebate scheme was um, introduced early on in the year, and this has been paid through the council tax billing system. Um, those of you that have paid by direct debit, you would already had your £150 paid directly um, to you, and um, that would have been done in April. So those of you that don't pay by direct debit through council tax um, and pay sort of by other means, then these payments, either you had to apply online for them to be issued to you directly, or failing that by the end of September, if you haven't gone through that process or your application wasn't complete, that payment's going to go straight onto your council tax account. And then you can apply directly to your local authority, as long as your account is in credit, for that to be refunded to you. So that's the first bit of help that's been uh, introduced. The government obviously then announced earlier in the year that there would be £200 for you um, onto your electric accounts as a repayable um, sort of bit of assistance. They've since changed that completely um, and have made it a total of £400, which will be paid as a grant. So there will be no requirement to pay this back. That will be added to most electric accounts, again, if you pay by sort of direct debit and you have that sort of tariff um, and it will be split from October over your monthly payments, um, give or take how your energy provider sort of decides to do that. Those that have prepayment meters, again, these amounts will be added to your meters. Um, and that, again, like I said, that is not repayable now. Um, so that will be done on a grant basis. On top of that, um, there are multiple other bits of cost of living payments, which is what I think has been sort of the general title for them. So people that are receiving certain means tested benefits and were receiving these benefits between the dates of the 26th of April this year and the 25th of May, we've already received first part of the payment of £650. 
The second part of the payment is due in the autumn, um, although the date hasn't been confirmed just yet. So onwards from there, there is an additional amount um, for those that are over state pension age at the point of 19th of September this year to the 25th of September. Um, that's an additional £300 for those that would already get the winter fuel payment. So that's on top of the winter fuel payment. And again, that is due to be paid um, November, December time. Um, as well as this, there is also £150 for those that receive qualifying disability benefits and did so at the date of the 25th of May 2022. Um, that again is due to be paid from September, so varying dates, so you'll need to sort of check what you qualify for and when it might be due. Um, but it's important to remember, I think, with these that they are grants, they're not taxable, and they also won't have any effect on a benefit cap um, and things going forwards as well for you. So um, it is possible that some of you will qualify for different ones of these, maybe more than one, um, and you know they, they will be paid separately. It's not just one or the other. Um, with regards to sort of other assistance, for those on low incomes, we do also uh, make applications to the Seven Trent Big Difference Scheme. So if you get in touch with the Tenancy Sustainment Team, we can by all means put a referral through. It's done on an income and expenditure basis and, and they will make a decision to consider whether they could reduce your water rates. Um, so again, I think the most important thing, if you've got any questions, come through to us. Um, if you do want help with any of these applications, give us a call. That's lovely. We've had another question. Is there any help available for people who aren't on benefits? I think everything's pushed towards those on benefits, but are, is there any help available for people who are not on benefits? I think, Kate, I'm going to come back to you on that one. Yeah, thanks. Um, it ties in nicely, though. So um, obviously, in addition to everything in the response before, um, we are able to make use of our online benefit calculator. There are links on the website and we're going to provide some more information with that as well um, in order to assist our customers to maximise their income, identify areas where maybe there could be entitlements that they haven't got currently. Um, also to then consider sort of what areas maybe some more budgeting help would be worthwhile. Um, some of the funding that we can access so that can also apply to those that don't receive any benefits. This is looked at really on an individual case by case basis. So um, we can sort of look at your circumstances and decide what might be suitable. Um, it is limited, but we, you know, we do have that there and we would like really to, to go through each case if you do need help um, and we can, we can have a look for you. Lovely, thank you. I've got quite a broad question here but I'm going to aim this one at Stacey I'm afraid um how can I reduce my energy bills okay so we have been pulling together um some tips and tricks and lots of resource on our website um we've launched our GCH economicals which is our tenancy sustainment team and we've got a new focus around what you can do even if it's just small things around the house um if it's your shopping and bits and pieces but Predominantly, when it comes to reducing your energy bills, it does really come down to lifestyle. Um, so there's a few little things that I'm going to go through just to explain uh, what you could possibly try to uh, to start reducing some of the uh, costs that are up and coming. Um, things like program uh, program your heating to your thermostat down by one one degree. One degree can cut up to, uh, bit your bills up to ten percent, um, and if you can avoid using plug-in heaters if possible, they are generally more expensive to run. Um, but ultimately, I think the kind of general turning things off at the wall, switching off that, that supply there and then, including things like mobile phone chargers, mm -hmm. you'd be surprised just how much energy they use just to be sat dormant, just to make sure that they are live and ready. Um, that's that's a, a, a really uh, good tip to, to try out. Um, when it comes to lighting, um, try using just one light in a room. It might be a reduced um, light, but ultimately I think sometimes we can get into the habit of putting on all the lamps and the overhead lights and bits and pieces. So just try to reduce things like that and also use low energy light bulbs as well. Um, they can actually 
um, the LED equivalents can use up to 90% less energy um, than a standard light bulb. So it's worth, worth investing in those. When it comes to washing your clothes as well, I think you've probably heard a lot of people do say about um, washing on a 30 or 40 degree wash, which does reduce a lot of um, extra costs spent heating the water because that is predominantly where the energy goes. Um, and actually with the good quality uh, washing facilities you can get these days, it's going to get your clothes clean anyway. Um, so when we think about being in the kitchen, um, generally boiling water can be quite expensive if you're going to do it through in a kettle, just try and boil what you can um, and then run in um, a bowl of water to do your washing up rather than running things into an ongoing source of hot water will also cut costs there. Keeping the heat in and the cold out. Now, there's a lot of things you can do here. You can get invest in some thicker curtains, um, covering up any glass surfaces um, as best you can is gonna help keep that heat inside the property and moving your furniture away from radiators and making sure that there's no nothing blocking that heat from coming into the room um, can be a really good way to uh, prevent any cold escaping and getting draft excluders for around doors that aren't necessarily as tight fitting um, and that will keep the cold air out too. Checking your tariff, um, each supplier is generally applying this differently. So it would be best to contact the supplier you have already and get their best advice about tariffs. Um, the, like I said before, there's a lot in the media about around whether or not to fix or whether or not to, um, to go on variable rate tariffs. I would get advice from your energy supplier based on your circumstances to find out whether or not it is gonna be a good idea to change tariff or stick where you are. So that's just a few um, bits of advice, things that are gen generally out there um, in the media to remind you of the little things you can do to help cut costs. Um, if you've got any other ideas, please let us know. Um, and hopefully you'll be able to reduce some of your day-to-day um, -day expenses. Thanks, Nath. Um, we do have a more comprehensive list on our website, so please feel free to view our team. And we're also able to uh, refer our customers to Warm and Well for advice, grant and funding inquiries following assessment in your own home. Um, we've had another question, so this is one that's probably affecting quite a few people right now. Um, this is coming your way, Damien. What should I do if I cannot pay my rent? OK, that's a good question. So the first thing I would say is not to panic or try not to panic. So there's many ways we can we can help you through that process. But the main aim is to get in contact with us. Um, unless the contact's made, we can't sort of assess your situation and, and, and try and tailor an approach that's going to work best for you. So even though it's hard, it's, you know, try and pick up the phone. If, if there's other ways to get in contact, we can be emailed. We can be text. There's there's all you know loads of ways that you can find on our website to get in contact. But once we we speak to you, we can sort of gauge your situation, and then you know try and work out what would be an affordable payment plan for you. I mean, our main aim is not to get the the debt paid as quickly as possible. It's to put a plan in place that you know you can you can plod away over a period of time and reduce the debt down gradually. And whilst we're having these conversations as well, we can sort of look at to see if there's any sort of benefits that are available to you that you're not already claiming. Um, again, through the conversation, we'll pick this up and see if we can make a, a referral to our tenancy sustainment team, who uh, you know are benefit experts, and they can run through all the uh, the details and see what's available to you and try and maximise your income. Um, obviously, for people that you know aren't on any benefits and working. Again, try and talk to us. You know, we've, we're very experienced income account managers. We've been dealing with this a long time. So, you know, we can sit down, work out when you're going to be paid. And, and again, try and work out something affordable to, to pay off any debt over a period of time. But the, the main message is just to, to get in contact and, and have a chat. We're very friendly and, we, you know, we can have a chat with you and see what's going on. We totally understand as well that a lot of people suffer with multiple debts and they, they can rack up quite quickly. Um, you know, we, again, our tenancy sustainment team can look at these to make referrals onto citizen device and other agencies that can deal with debt. Um, GL Communities is one just to say, and citizen device is another one that are all based in Gloucester. So again, going through your situation, we can assess whether 
these would be beneficial to you to reduce other debt so that you can then pay your rent. Okay. Um, just to say our aim is in to ensure our, we keep our customers in their homes in line with their tenancy agreement and we look to support and advise rather to take the enforcement action. We would much rather spend time working with you to reduce debt and eradicate the debt rather than take legal action. So we are always here to help and we are always here to give advice and provide support. I'm um, looking at my other questions. So I've had quite a specific question, but it's not too personal. So I'm, I'm gonna ask it. So I've had a question saying, I've recently moved into a GCH flat and my washing machine is broken. Can I get any help with this? Kate? Hi, yeah, um, I think that's everybody's biggest fear sometimes is the unexpected breakdown of an expensive item. And I mean, most of the time, especially when at the moment things are, you know, costs are rising and it can, you know, it, it can be sort of deemed an emergency situation, especially things like washing machines, for example. Um, we do have access to some funders um, that we can submit applications to on your behalf. They do look at individual circumstances. Um, they would generally ask for sort of income details, evidence, supporting bank statements, things like that. Um, so, but it is something that we can do. Some of the funders that we work with have different criteria for their eligibility. So we would need to match the individual with the correct organization to begin with um, and sort of assess the need and the requirements um, and go from there. Um, so if I think in those sort of instances where there is no funding available, um, we would look at other ways to maybe help support you. So again, use of the budgeting tools to see if we can identify um, any income that could be released from other places in order to help out. But also, I mean, locally, we're very lucky to have a lot of very good um, sort of retailers of refurbished equipment. So you've got Stevens Electricals that do refurbished equipment. Um, for other items, you've got things like the furniture recycling project. So I think there's a lot around. And again, it is one of those that we are more than happy um, if you find yourself in a situation like that, for you to come through to the tenancy sustainment team. We will identify whether any grant funding is available. Um, and if not, help you work as best as we can to find a solution because you know we want you to be able to keep your house running. And I think you know that's what we're here for. Thank you. Um, another question, and I think this is incredibly prevalent at this time. Um, I can't afford food for my family. Can you help with this? Stace? Yes, we absolutely can. Um, but ultimately, this is the point which we would consider a crisis. Um, you know, we we have got good connections in the local area for food banks and there are a lot of local uh, deliveries in the area, especially in Westgate, Kingsholm and Matson, um, that offer some um, food donations um, and that's ad hoc donations. So if you were ever in a situation where you can't afford food um, and you are panicking um, about what you're going to do next and where the next um, you know, bit of income is going to come from, then there are some crisis services out there that can help. But I think off the back of what Kate was saying about the washing machine, like those are the life curveballs that catch us off guard now and again. And it can be really um, unsettling to have to, you know, have to put forward that money to buy something just to continue to keep your children in clean clothes and stuff like that. Um, but I would say try not to react to that panic because like, like Kate said, there is options out there. There are grants and funding that we can obtain to help maybe to, to secure that and prevent it eating into your food budget. Um, and like Damien was saying with the rent, you know, at the end of the day, if your rent isn't covered, the roof of your head, then food for your family is almost kind of, you know, further away from being the crisis itself. It's 
what we want to do is find the underlying cause of that crisis, what has put you in that situation, identify the root causes and then work with you to try and provide help and support and solutions going forward so that you then don't find yourself in that situation again. Um, and that's why the Tenancy Sustainment Team provides such a robust service in budgeting support and identifying incomes that can be maximised, any grant funding that can be claimed as well if it's circumstantial. Um, but we do, like I say, provide a full service, not around just that particular crisis itself, as if I can't afford food for my family. It's normally a snowball of reaction from something that's created this uh, current situation. So um, it can be easy as well. And this is a bit of a warning. Um, Gloucestershire has quite a problem with loan sharks and doorstep lenders. And this is a bit of a shout out to say that we strongly recommend avoiding any form of doorstep lender um, on, as they're more commonly known loan sharks, like I say, because these commitments are not only expensive, but they, they can actually put you at risk. Um, and it, as much as you want to be able to resolve the immediate situation you're in, my strongest guidance would be to come to us and uh, say that you've, you're in that situation or you have been offered that as a solution so that we can report it safely um, and then obviously help um, provide you with what you need um, to highlight any issues with your income and help get you any food vouchers or parcels that you may be entitled to. Um, so like I say, on our website, our tenancy sustainment team have now got a raft of information and the connection, uh, the links on the website there to the Loan Shark uh, website so you can safely report it anonymously. Um, and I strongly recommend you do that if you do find yourself in that situation. But like Kate has said as well, contact us. Um, our number is on our website. We've got an email address um, and you can ref get referred through the website as well. Um, so please get in touch. Thank you, Stace. Um, we have Rob on the panel and we were going to get Rob to talk about whether we've got any plans to make houses more energy efficient. But we've had a specific question in from Paul who asks, is there funding or plans to roll out solar panels on properties to help residents with energy costs and solutions? So I'm going to pose that one to Rob. Thanks, Becky. The short answer is, is yes. Um, we are looking to install solar panels on, on properties um, to help residents with their bills, um, but also improve the energy efficiency um, of properties and also to you know, reduce the amount of carbon uh, that our stock uh, producers we all have a you know a duty over the next few decades in order to reduce as a, as a nation uh, the amount of carbon that we produce uh, you know in order to secure the environment and the planet for, for future generations so you know us doing a little bit by installing solar panels on on some of our properties um, you will help to to achieve that so the slight sort of like longer more kind of complicated question around what our plans are um, to improve the energy efficiency of our properties is that, yes, um, you know, we do have a plan. Um, I have uh, around 16 to 17 million pounds to invest in our properties over the next 12 years. Um, and that links into a target that the government has set us to ensure that all our properties achieve what is known as a, a band C. Um, so each property has an energy certificate. Uh, the national average at the moment is pretty poor. Um, it's around a D, um, but the government would like to uh, ensure all um, local authority, council houses, affordable homes across the country achieve a ban C by 2035. So I've been busy over the past sort of 12, 18 months with my team um, assessing all our properties and those properties that we have that don't achieve a ban C, I have a plan for. So I know which properties they are, um, and I know which energy improvement measure um, they require, be it solar or improved insulation or different heating systems uh, and so forth. And although we haven't advertised it uh, massively, that programme's already started. So um, and we're, we're going to ramp it up over the next few years. So last year I tackled 30 properties. There's 30 properties across the city. Um, some of those had solar panels. Some of those had some um, upgraded heating systems which were more efficient and therefore cheaper to run um, for, for the individuals. And, and some of the properties had some simple things like um, increased loft insulation and, and some new windows and things like that. Um, this year, um, I've got another pro 
project to install energy improvement measures on 44 um, units. Um, so that's eight bungalows across the city. And again, we're doing a, a range of things there, including putting in some um, some insulation and, and solar panels. And then on the blocks, uh, on the other 36 units, mainly focuses on, on flats. Uh, we're looking to uh, put some, you know, sort of super, super thick, high, um, high, highly efficient external insulation on those properties, you know, in a way, putting a woolly jump around them in order to, uh, to keep them warm and make sure the heat's retained. And when we re uh, retain the heat within the building, building becomes cheaper to, to heat. So building becomes cheaper to heat. You know, we'll see that through reduced bills um, for, our, for our tenants. So yeah, in, in summary, yes. Yes, we are uh, installing solar panels. Uh, yes, I have a plan. Uh, yes, I have money um, to, do, to do that plan. I think the one thing that um, is important to point out, it's not gonna happen overnight, unfortunately. You know, I would like to wave a magic wand and spend that 17 million pounds tomorrow. Uh, and install all the solar panels that we need to install and upgrade all the insulation um, that we need to install. But, you know, it's going to take time. Um, you know, we need to visit these properties. We need to design the solutions to make sure they're appropriate. We need to appoint contractors. We need to buy the materials. We need to install it. So so it is, it, it is going to take time. Um, but what I'm doing is I'm making sure I'm focusing on so the key properties first are so those that are the worst performing. Um, so GCH's stock is well above the um, the average in terms of its thermal performance. So um, we we already rank a C uh, as an average, but there you know with averages there's some properties that'll be below a C and there'll be some properties ab above a C. So my focus is on on the um, on the worst performing ones first, um, and also particularly focusing on. Um, individuals who may be within within fuel fuel poverty as well um so so targeting those but you know I, I my message i suppose to everybody um who's watching at home or on the bus or wherever you are you know with all this newfangled technology you can watch this wherever can't you is you know if you're particularly worried about the thermal performance of your um properties give me a call um i'm generally around uh, so you can call the 01452 4244344 number um ask for rob panu um say your um career is about energy efficiency or energy performance in in your property if i'm not around customer experience take a note for you uh, and pass me on um a, a case which i'll which i'll get and i'll review and we can have a conversation about your property and you know if there are plans for it I can share those plans with you. I've got nothing to hide. I'm quite happy to be open and honest. Um, if the energy assessment we've got your, for your property is slightly out of date uh, and, and uh, we can do with renewing it, that's fine. Um, I've got an energy assessor who works for me, who's out in the city day in, day out doing energy assessments, refining the plans we've got for each property. So I'm more than happy to point him in the direction of your property and, and, and get that sorted. So yeah, you know, please, please do call me. So, my name's Robert, uh, 424344, um, give me a call. Um, Becky gives me loads of work always, so I'm generally still online at six, seven o'clock at night, so um, you'll be able to uh, able to get me then. But um, yeah, thanks, Becky. Thanks, we're living in a very interactive world. Paul, who asked that question to Rob, has just come back and said, brilliant, thanks for the clear answer. And he's looking forward to seeing the things we're doing to carry out works to future proof our homes. So thanks for your involvement, Paul. That's lovely. Um, like Rob said, I'm I'm a very proud manager and I do manage the income and sustainment team. And we do take a huge amount of pride in being the ones that will help and assist. We don't want to look to enforcement action. We don't want to take unnecessary legal actions. So that's going to cause you cost you money and stress. What we're trying to do is make as many contacts as possible with as many people as possible. And it may seem sometimes like you don't want to talk about it and life's a bit hard and you really want to try and avoid things. And we will keep trying to contact you. We'll phone you, we'll text you, we'll email you to see which is the best method of you to engage with us on. Um, it might seem a little bit heavy handed sometimes, but it is done with the best of intentions to get someone to engage with us, because once the point of engagement happens, we're well versed in how to support, how to advise, how to get you back in payment of rent, how to secure the roof over your head. 
and then we'll work on securing the roof of your head and then improving the roof of your head so it's energy efficient and it costs less in the long run so our plea as much as we've got no firm advice from the government at this time and it is an incredibly big period of flux for everybody nobody's really got a clear answer of what's happening where at the moment but we are here to try and advise and try and navigate you through that process with as much support and advice as possible so thank you all for your inquiries today all the information we've mentioned will be on our, available on our website including links to a raft of information we've been collating so far for our customers to be able to access as much as they can we will be updating this as things change. We will be making constant changes to this website link in order to give you the most up-to-date information as we know it. Um, we will get back to everyone who sent us in a message this morning. We do appreciate your engagement and we encourage our customers to get in touch so we can offer this support. Um, I'm being awake, made aware that this video will be shared on our Facebook and our YouTube channel shortly. So I'd just like to take the time to thank the panel and um, thank my team, especially for the work that's gone into providing this information for you all. And to thank you all for watching. Um, so thank you.